Balancing chemical equations has a very important function in chemistry as it helps us to understand in what ratio elements and compounds react with each other, which obviously helps us when in industry determining what ratios or what amounts of each substance we need in order to produce a certain amount of product. So the reason that we balance equations is to ensure that all of our reactants are completely converted into products and there are no leftovers or remain after the reaction is complete. So as an example here, we can see that in this reaction there is one iron atom in the reactants, but then in the product we have two iron atoms present, which is obviously not possible because it is not possible to create matter. So in order for us to complete this reaction, we need to balance it to ensure that there are the same number of each element present in the reactants as there are in the products. Now we know that we may not change the formula for any element or compound. We cannot change the ratio in which iron and oxygen are combined with each other in this reaction. We cannot change the ratio in which oxygen is combined with itself in this compound here. The only thing that we can change is what's called the coefficient, the number in front of each element or compound, because that tells us how many of that element or compound need to be present. So the way that we do this is we start by looking in the reactants here we have one iron atom, in the product we have two iron atoms. So the only way that we can balance that is by putting a two in front of this iron here, so that we have two iron atoms and two iron atoms. We then move on to the next one. We see in our reactants here, we have two oxygen atoms. In our products, we have three oxygen atoms. The only way that we can balance that is by putting a two in front here. What that then means is it means that there are two times three, six oxygen atoms. And then the way in which we balance that here is we put a three in front of this oxygen to say that there are three times two oxygen atoms. So we have now balanced the oxygens, but by putting a two here, I've thrown the iron out of balance. So we can see in our products, I now have two times two, four iron atoms. And in our reactants, I only have two. So what I can do is I can remove that and place a four in front of that iron there. So that now tells us that we have four iron atoms in the reactants, two times two, four iron atoms in the products. Three times two, six oxygen atoms in the reactants, two times three, six oxygen atoms in the products. So this process repeats itself and you can do it for seemingly more complicated reactions as well. First, keeping in mind that you may not change the formula of an individual compound. So we would start here by seeing that in our reactants, I only have one iron atom. In the products, I have two iron atoms. So I would balance that by placing a two in front of this compound here. What I can now see is I have two iron atoms. I also have two times three, six bromine atoms in our reactants. I only have one bromine atom in the product. So the way that I balance that is I place a six in front of hydrogen bromide. I now move on. I see that in our reactants I have two hydrogen atoms and in the products I have six hydrogen atoms. So I would balance that by placing a three here, three times two, six hydrogen atoms. And then finally, as you can see here, we have sulfate SO4 in our reactants and it remains sulfate SO4 in our product. So I do not need to look at that as sulfur and oxygen separately, although I can. And what I can see is in our reactants, I have three sulfate compounds. And in the products, I have a three over here, which tells us that I have three sulfate compounds, which says that our sulfates are balanced. Now, to check that I'm correct, I can go through this once more and see that I have two iron atoms in the reactants, two iron atoms in the products. Two times three, six bromine atoms in the reactants, six times one, six bromine atoms in the products, three times two, six hydrogen atoms in the reactants, and six hydrogen atoms in the products, and finally, three sulfate ions in the reactants, and three sulfate ions in the products, so we can say that this equation is now balanced.